So it looks like we are on the play here. Let's see what we got. Um, all right, we're definitely going to mulligan this. Not really much of a question. Only one island, no swamps. And this is a bit better. Um, so we're going to keep him. We get a scry, which is nice. We're looking for an untapped land. Grasp of Darkness. We can just go ahead and move that to the bottom of our deck here. And I'm going to lead on the Crypt Breaker. We're hoping to instantly draw a land here so that we can discard to Crypt Breaker on turn two. So that's a little unfortunate, but hopefully we'll be able to get these prized amalgams in the graveyard, find a haunted dead, and we can start bringing them back a little bit later. And we'll see what our opponent's actually playing. We don't, we don't know yet. It looks like probably black green. Um, Delirium. So we're seeing a Sylvan Advocate. Hopefully our Crypt Breaker does not die to Liliana the Last Hope, which would be a bit unfortunate, to say the least. So we've got a couple of options here. We did draw our third land. Um, we could cast Prized Amalgam. That way we would have um, a blocker for the Sylvan Advocate this turn. We can play our Liliana the Last Hope. Tick that up. Um, and I kind of like that play, actually just playing the Liliana the Last Hope. It may be that our opponent has Ruinous Path, but we don't know. Um, and being able to play this here and just work slowly towards that ultimate is a possibility. And it looks like our opponent does actually have a Liliana of their own, which was worst case scenario. That's going to mean our Crypt Breaker bites the dust. So now we're, we're almost all in, if you will, on our Liliana. And I think we have a couple of options. We can play Prized Amalgam, but I'd rather play the Jace here. And s hopefully that'll stick around. And we can filter through some of some of this prized amalgams into the yard. All right, that's really unfortunate. There's a ruinous path that's going to take care of our Liliana. So it looks like our opponent kind of has everything this game, but. We'll keep on trucking and see if there's anything we can do to mount a comeback here. I think we want to just go ahead and start with the loot. So we could put a prized amalgam in the graveyard. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with discarding a prized amalgam here. And I think we might actually want to cast one as well. We don't really have anything better to do with our mana, so yeah. We'll discard one, cast the other one. Really, we're, really was looking for something like... We're digging for something like a Voldaren Pariah to be able to madness in here. And we can afford to take the hit from the Sylvan Advocate. That's not the card we're that worried about. It's more how are we going to be able to pressure our opponent's Liliana at this point. And it looks like our opponent does actually have removal for our Jace. So we can play the Choked Estuary, revealing a Swamp. And so Dark Salvation, we, we have one zombie in play already, so we can go ahead and try to actually get rid of the Sylvan Advocate. And if this doesn't work, we're going to be in, in a rough spot. But 
if it does work, we still have a shot. Um, our opponent's definitely further ahead in the game as of right now because we took a mulligan and then our Crypt Breaker died to Liliana. Now our opponent has Liliana on six counters, but if this resolves, okay, so it's, it is going to resolve, we can try to, to mount a comeback here. Um, so we're just going to swing the prized amalgam into this Liliana. And there's the Grasp of Darkness. So actually our opponent made a, a little bit of a misplay. If our opponent had Grasp of Darkness, our prized amalgam before the Dark Salvation had resolved, the Sylvan Advocate would still be in play. Um, so that was definitely a mistake, but it looks like it's not going to cost our opponent. Um, we, we're pretty much running on empty at this point. We can try to attack into the Liliana, but... Yeah, our opponent's just going to be able to ultimate Liliana, so rather than play through that with two lands in hand, let's uh, move to the sideboard. And we've got a bunch of options, actually, in the sideboard, so we've got some counter spells here. Clash of Wills. I like Clash of Wills a lot. Summary Dismissal is somewhat reasonable. Negate. Similarly, the Risen Executioner is a card that can just continually come back from the graveyard. So I like that. We can cut down on the Crypt Breakers and the Relentless Dead sort of stuff. We saw how Crypt Breaker can die to Liliana, the Last Hope. And we don't really want that to happen again. So I'm fine with actually just shaving our Crypt Breakers completely. Um... And we're making our deck sort of more of a mid-range blue-black control deck. Um, we can shave shave some of our actions. In, in return, we're going to get some counter spells and play and some discard. So I think the Voldaren Pariahs are okay, but we're not, we don't, we're, we're not super high on them in this matchup. Um, so we can sh we can shave a few cards here or there. Um, I like the Grasp of Darkness. They can kill Sylvan Advocate. They can kill Tireless Tracker. And I think we can afford to get away with only one Summary Dismissal in this matchup. Maybe we do want the second one, though. We have to be worried about a card like Infinite Obliteration after Cyborg. So we've got a couple removal spells, a Pariah for later, so we, we are going to keep this hand. And we're trying to play a long game. So we drew Risen Executioner, which is pretty good actually. So that's a way we can try to pressure our opponent. But once again, we do have turn three Liliana, so we're going to hope that this time around our opponent is not waiting with the Ruinous Path to get rid of our Liliana. Alright, there's Transgress the Mind. So our opponent... Depending on what our opponent has, they may want to take this Risen Executioner. Um, other options would be our removal. So we'll see what, what happens here. I would not expect our opponent to take the Voldaren Pariah at this point. But you never know. The thing is, is that once we boarded out our Crypt Breakers, it's harder to... It's a lot harder to transform the Pariah. We still can, but it's not as easy. That's for sure. And it looks like 
Okay, so it looks like our opponent did take the Risen Executioner, which seemed like the most likely choice. And our draw is a prized amalgam, so I'm fine with actually just running that out. And our opponent is stuck on two lands here. But I think we still just tick up our Liliana and pass. So our opponent's found that forest, which also might mean that our opponent is planning on casting Ruinous Path on their next turn, on our Liliana. We could minus Liliana here to try to hit a creature, but I th think I think we still want to plus it just in case our opponent doesn't have Ruinous Path, even though it's... It seems like it's our opponent probably has Ruinous Path, but if our opponent doesn't, then this Liliana should just win the game. And the Black Green Delirium deck normally only plays like two Ruinous Paths, and then there's also some To the Slaughter in that deck, so... You know, it's not a given that our opponent's going to be able to kill this Liliana. Um, and if we go ultimate, that things can get pretty crazy. Uh, we are playing a zombie deck, so... Yeah. So it looks like our opponent is going with a Liliana, the last hope of their own. Interesting choice here. We do have a Runus Path, so we can simply get rid of it. We're definitely going to plus our Liliana up to 7 here, and hope that it's going to go ultimate. And our opponent is not delirious so okay that that there's a languish but this Liliana the last hope we are immediately ultimating this thing um, that is not really a tough decision and for the follow-up and it looks like our opponent yeah our opponent's seen enough there's not gonna be any coming back from an ultimated Liliana there for sure our opponent got a little unlucky to stumble, but uh, we were able to capitalize, so we'll see what game three brings. Um, we've got some removal still in our deck. The d Only one Dark Salvation, just because it's a little bit slow. I could see boarding some more in. The Executioners, um, on the draw, it may be that we can afford to shave on them. We still have one Relentless Dead though. I think I'd rather just take that out. Um, board in maybe a second Dark Salvation. We still have this Summary Dismissal. But I think this is a, a pretty pretty solid configuration. So let's try this. Our opponent is going to be on the play here, and it looks like we are once again going to have to take a mulligan to start things off, and pretty much have to keep this this um, second hand here. So we see a submerged boneyard on top. We've got a mind bender, a lily, and a dark salvation. I think we want to bottom this. We're looking for something that we can emerge the mind bender in with and we drew another land so we've got really plenty of lands we're just looking for some interaction maybe a grasp of darkness for the sylvan advocate would be nice
but unfortunately we don't have that here. So basically, not our. Well, it wasn't our first choice, but we may just play this Liliana and plus on our next turn. But it looks like our opponent may be taking that option away from us. This transgress the mind is pretty likely to take our Liliana, and it's going to leave us in a rough spot. All right, hoping for something like like a prized amalgam, and there it is. Okay, so. We did draw a prized amalgam. Now let's hope that it actually lives so that we can emerge it and get this mind bender into play. All right, it looks like our opponent's seen through our plan and that prized amalgam is dying a pretty quick death here. But I think that means we're just going to have to pass um, our opponent still got four cards in hand. We could have Dark Salvation there just to make one zombie token, but that doesn't really seem that appealing. So we did draw into Valderan Pariah. So this seems like a good time to go ahead and get that card into play. We still have yet to draw Haunted at Dead at all, which would, would just be fantastic here. And, okay, Grasp of Darkness is going to get rid of our Pariah. So we're back to basically square one, but our the Sylvan Advocate of our opponents could very easily become a four-power creature, and there's a Tireless Tracker. Traverse the Ulvenwald, that's going to be in the sixth land. So we're, we're just basically one, one step behind right now, and I don't know that we're going to be able to catch up. So our opponent is smartly now popping the clue. So we can't get rid of the tracker with the dark salvation. And we can we're basically left in a very bad spot, but we're forced to dark salvation here. Just to make two two twos, but that's that's not where we want to be. So our opponent has successfully seized the initiative and doesn't seem to be looking back here. So here's the Hissing Quagmire activation. Here come the creatures. It looks like just the Advocate and the Quagmire. So we're going to go ahead and double block this Hissing Quagmire here. That's going to mean taking four damage. And that's going to be the game, actually. The Clash of Wills is not going to help us at this point. So, um, yep, that's going to do it.